And joining me now is Congressman Jim Clyburn, Democrat from South Carolina. Congressman Clyburn, welcome back to Meet the Press and Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you as well, and thank you so much for having me back. Well, thank you for joining us on this holiday weekend. I do want to start with that tragic bridge collapse in Baltimore. President Biden has committed some $60 million so far. That's considered to be a fraction of what is needed. As you know, some of your colleagues, some fiscal conservative Republicans are already saying that they oppose approving more funding for Baltimore. What say you, Congressman? Do you think that Congress will ultimately wind up approving more funding for Baltimore? Well, I certainly hope so. Uh, the fact of the matter is, all of us, every state in the nation, all 50 of us, will take our turns needing this kind of assistance. It may be gust storms uh, in some places. Uh, it may be a flood or, here in this part of the country, hurricanes. We all are subjected, uh, at one time or another, to some kind of calamity, and we have seen this before. I will always remember how some of my colleagues failed to come to the assistance of a certain part of the country until it came to their backyards. And then, all of a sudden, they saw the need for it. So when I hear my colleagues talk about Baltimore in this instance, I remind those, especially here in South Carolina, we got a pretty big port here a very important port, and we've got a very big bridge uh, that we uh, look upon with pride. What were to happen, if that were to happen, what would our response be? So let's just remember that everybody gets their turn in need uh, of assistance, and we ought to be rallying around Maryland, rallying around Baltimore, doing what is necessary to get that economy back running again, to get those people back on the jobs. Just remember, that port is closed. A lot of people are out of work, and this is not the time of year you want to see that happening. All right. Well, Congressman, let me ask you about some other very big news this week, that historic fundraiser that saw former presidents Obama and Clinton join President Biden, a show of force. They raised more than $25 million, obviously aimed at energizing the base. No doubt it likely did that. But my question for you, Congressman, do you expect to see those former presidents out on the campaign trail routinely? Will they be a common presence on the campaign trail? I think so, but not to show force, but more to show unity, unity of purpose, to show defense of democracy. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on here. Three former presidents, all of three of whom have had their challenges, but every one of them stood for what is right in this country, and that is to protect this democracy mm -hmm. and putting themselves below the needs, the dreams, the aspirations of the American people. So what we saw in New York last Thursday was a show of unity and a show of defense of democracy. And that is what we need in this country at this particular juncture. Well, Congressman, as you know, looming large over that event, including with some protesters, is the war in the Middle East. And in fact, a new Gallup poll finds that a majority of all Americans now oppose Israel's war in Gaza and approval of Israel's actions have dropped from 50 to 36 percent since November. There were a number of interruptions at that fundraiser and a growing number of Democrats are now calling this a genocide, including Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. So, Congressman, my question for you, do you agree with Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez that what is happening is, in fact, a genocide? Well, I have not analyzed it to that extent, but I tell you this. What is happening is wrong, and we need to make it right. And that's what President Biden is trying to do, trying to make it right. And I would say that that poll showed much of, uh, more of a dissatisfaction with Netanyahu mm. than with the people of Israel. We stand with the people of Israel. We do not like the fact that this country's policy is a two-state solution. 
and Netanyahu has undermined that two-state solution for as long as he's been in office. He sold his soul to the right-wingers in Israel in order to maintain power for himself, uh, and those people are opposed to a two-state solution. Biden is for a two-state solution. Democrats are for a two-state solution. That is the only way for us to move forward. And so this drop in support has nothing to do with the people of Israel and everything to do with Netanyahu. Yeah. Congressman, do you think the U.S. is doing enough, though? It's just approved another uh, order of shipments of munitions and weapons to Israel. A Democratic Senator Chris Van Hollen saying the Biden administration, quote, needs to use their leverage effectively and should receive these basic commitments before greenlighting more bombs for Gaza. Commitments to preserve civilian lives is what he's referencing. Should the U.S. be using its leverage and withholding those munition shipments? Well, the leverage it has to be used, and I think the president is using his leverage. But is he now, using enough of it, Congressman? Has... They just accused that they just uh, approved that new shipment of weapons. Well, the question is, what were the agreements made last year and the year before, and whether or not we are going to keep our word? We cannot go back on our word and expect for other people uh, to keep theirs. So we have to keep our word. And so I have no idea what may be in these deals, what the president may uh, be living up to. But the fact of the matter is, we must not lose our integrity as a nation, uh, and we've got to stand in support of Israel. Congressman, let me ask you about what's happening in South Carolina this week. A federal court ruled that the South Carolina has to use a congressional map in the upcoming elections that it called an unconstitutional racial gerrymander after the Supreme Court failed to weigh in on the case. ProPublica has a report that you actually worked with Republicans on this map to maintain a tighter grip on your own district by ensuring that 30,000 black voters would move from a neighboring swing district into your own. Was that the case? No, that was not the case at all. When someone picks up the phone and asks you, what are your suggestions uh, as we're about to get these lines drawn? I offered my suggestions, and I certainly didn't ask my uh, district uh, to be turned in uh, to a minority, uh, a minority district, and that's what it is. People keep publishing that I have a majority minority district. That is absolutely not true. Check the numbers. So when you hear people misrepresenting, and that's been going on throughout this whole uh, nation for uh, several years now, uh, a conversation. Yes, I offered my suggestions. Did they follow my suggestions? Absolutely not. And so when you say you spoke to me and that there's an agreement, that is absolutely not true. And I told a young lady uh, who came to me with that story, who happens to be from South Carolina, or at least she used to work here in South Carolina, she was looking to make a headline rather than to make any headway. And so I would say that I was not surprised at this. Remember, the court did the same thing up in North Carolina the last time around. Yeah. They allow North Carolina to go forward uh, with the gerrymandered district that were unfair. And so uh, I was not surprised at this at all. Let me ask you uh, about Congress, more broadly speaking, Congressman. A growing number of Democrats say they would protect Speaker Johnson from being ousted if he brings Ukraine aid to the floor. Do you think that's the case? And would you protect him if there was a move to oust him for bringing Ukraine aid to the floor? Well, let me say, first of all, I stand in support of our leader, Hakeem Jeffries. He is in those meetings. He is doing the negotiations. If he were to call me and say, uh, look, uh, I would like to have your vote in support uh, of Johnson, he's got it. If he says to me, uh, otherwise, I'm going to follow his lead. Yeah. So I'm not in those meetings, and I have no idea exactly what uh, the result of those meetings may be, mm -hmm. but I stand in firm support of the leadership of the party. And let me say, if I'm, am I, you mentioned South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I want to mention something about North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Come Thursday, mm -hmm. uh, the vice uh, president is going to be back in North Carolina with 30, I'm sorry, $20 billion to fight 
climate change mm. and to lower the cost, uh, the cost of energy uh, in the North Carolina. And I might add, uh, Joe Biden did yeah. not win North Carolina the last time around, but he is demonstrating once again that he is going to be a president of all the people, irrespective of whether or not they voted for him uh, in the election. Congressman, quickly before I let you go, I don't have to tell you, we live in a very divided moment. This is Easter. What is your message about bipartisanship? Is it possible? I sure hope it's possible. I know this. Uh, we are now calling Easter uh, Resurrection Sunday, and I would hope that we can resurrect those things that have made this country great. I often said that this country is no need of being made great. We are great. We've all got to work together to make this country's greatness accessible and affordable for all of its citizens, be it education, energy, health care, whatever it is, those greatnesses must be made available to everybody, and we ought to do that on the bipartisan basis. All right. Yes, let's have the contest. I love the contest. I love campaigning. <laughs> but when the campaign is over, let's work together and let's do what is necessary for this country to maintain its greatness. I have nothing against Republicans. My parents yeah. were Republicans. I worked very closely with the Republican governor of South Carolina. Yeah. Because we want to make sure that energy, uh, broadband, health care, education get to everybody. All right. So that's, I would hope that we can, on a bipartisan basis, resurrect the goodnesses of the American people and maintain the greatness of these United States of America. All right. Congressman Clyburn, thank you so much. I hope you have a very happy Easter. Thanks for joining us on this Easter Sunday. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.